o'clock Tuesday, and I meant to mention this earlier, but I was this week has been a bit of a write off. Uh, this Tuesday, uh, prayer meeting should be here, here, but Ellie has invited everyone to to our house uh, for prayer meeting at seven thirty. Um, there might not be the most in depth Bible study that you've ever heard, but we will gather, um, have some prayer. That's right, isn't it, Ellie? You... Oh no, no, it's not. It's... Both of us, but uh, I was trying to be funny. Um, I think that was it. I'm sure there were three, but never mind. We'll work out the other one in about half an hour. Uh, we're going to sing, and we come today to celebrate. This morning, we're thinking about Zechariah and his speech, his prophecy of praise. And he celebrated not necessarily the birth of his son, but the birth of the son that was to come. And today we come and we join together in celebration at the birth of Christ. So let's sing together. Come and join the celebration. It's a very special day. Lovely. Now, I did, I think I said last week, young people, it's wonderful that you're here. And I'd just like to give you a two minutes to show off. Two minutes. So if you've, if you've unwrapped anything this morning and you're particularly excited about it and you'd like to come and tell everyone what that is, bring it up here. If you come unprepared, then you won't be able to. But if you've got something, come up here. Mawson's, you have. We've been talking about this all morning. Come here. Artorius, you're here. Paul, I'm going to hold this. Oh, James. Are we here? We're going to start with James. James is brilliant. We have three traffic cones down the side there that we have to keep close eye on. James, what, what have you got for Christmas, James? A traffic cone? I thought it was a traffic cone as soon as I saw it. Even though it was wrapped up, you thought yes. it would be a traffic cone. It was cone shaped. It was cone shaped. <laughs> Lovely. I'm not. We're not going to ask any more questions. Is it a new jumper as well? Yes. It's a very smart jumper with a little bit of Simpson. Eliana, what have you got? Uh, unicorn balloons that glow in the dark. Unicorn balloons that glow in the dark. Yeah. As far as we know, we think they just light up and do that. So you're going to wait till tonight to find out the full extent of the joy. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Lovely. Now we are. Pardon? 
Has his own going up thing there? Yeah. You can go up if you if you if you don't have a pump, then you can just use the one in here. Oh, there's a pump in there as well. Yeah. Awesome. Snazzy. Oh, Taurus, come here. What is this? This looks fun. Yeah, it's a light fan. I brought it like a few years ago, I think. Okay, cool. So, so you... everyone. Ooh, that looks fun. Yep. Yep. Good. You seem excited, Dominic. What did you get? These are magnetic thing. These are magnetic finger rings. Magnetic, and what do they do? Um, you can do some sort of like finger tricks with them. They're like magnets. You have to go. There we go. They look fun. Good man, Samuel. Come here. Come here, Sammy. Oh, Isaac's coming first. Okay, it really doesn't matter. Every year. If you don't know, they're my children. Thank you, Isaac. Good boy. Good boy. What did you get? You're going to show everyone. If I stand here, what? don't don't say it. A voice changer. <laughs> A voice changer. And Samuel, I'm here. What is it? You've got shy for it. You're going to say? Ah. <laughs> Don't work with children. Right, thank you, children. That's brilliant. You take them back. I've got something to say to you in a second. Samuel got a back scratcher, uh, which is very... No, he didn't. Children, I have a bit of paper here. Can you see this bit of paper? And I have a pair of scissors. If I told you, bear with me, if I told you that I could cut a hole in this bit of paper and I could fit through it, what would you think? We didn't do it last, Dominic. What would you think? When? Well, last week, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, somewhere. You literally can because I, should, I, I, I told you. Can anyone remember exactly how? Whoa. It's basically easy. Thank you, Samuel. I just covered it, but you can. I'm, I've genuinely forgotten. I'm not going to do it under pressure in front of everyone, but you can. It's quite easy. It's quite fun. You can, you can cut a hole in a bit of paper that everyone can fit through. I wonder how many people thought, Tom, what are you doing? You, you did this two weeks ago. Why are you doing the same children's talk? We know that you don't remember things, but, but why are you doing the same thing? Well, there is a point to this. I wonder how many times in my life I've said, Christmas is all about Jesus. Don't forget about Jesus at Christmas. Do you reckon I've said it quite a lot? Quite a few, quite a few. I said it this morning, I think we've said it. But how easy is it to forget just that one sentence? Christmas is all about Jesus. Remember Jesus at Christmas time. How easy is it to unwrap our back scratches or our traffic cones or whatever it is we got and just be so excited about that that we forget to be excited that it's Today, that we celebrate the birth of Christ, the birth of our Savior. There was a man a long while ago called Zechariah. And Zechariah had a baby born about three months before Jesus was born. Six months before Jesus was born. Six months before Jesus was born. Because it's been six months. Yeah, it must be six. And Zechariah, when his baby John was born, do you know what? He was more excited about another baby that was to come than he even was his own baby. He started talking excitedly and he was more excited about Jesus than he was about his own baby. He'd been given this wonderful gift of a son and he was more excited about Jesus than even his own son. I hope today that we're all more excited about Jesus and we remember to be more excited about Jesus than anything else we may find ourselves gaining today. Thank you for listening. During the service, all the children are staying in. There is some colouring. I don't know if it's there it is done. It's been distributed, but you can colour to your heart's content and show me at the end what you've done. We're going to sing again, and then Jan is going to come and read to us. But we're going to sing Joy to the World. There's an extra verse that I didn't know of in this. I think it's the third verse. Um, and I was my natural instinct with Christmas carols is to take out any new verses that I don't know. But as I was reading the words to this one, um, it, it kind of fits with the message um, and talks about how Jesus came and his blessings flow and he works against the curse that was brought uh, by sin. 
So let's sing. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. <clears throat> The readings taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, starting at verse 67, and can be found on page 856 in the Church Bibles. And his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day of his public appearance to Israel. Thank you, Jan, for reading those words, which we're going to look into uh, in a few moments. Before we do, let's come before the Lord in prayer uh, this morning. Father God, I thank you that we can gather in this place. How good it is to have this building to come and worship you together in. Lord, may our whole lives be one of worship. 
May we turn to you with every triumph giving thanks. May we turn to you with every trial seeking help. Father God, today we realize that your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, came to this earth to be born as a human, to live as a human, but to do it perfectly, better than any of us ever could hope to do. Ultimately, to lose that life on a cross, to give that life on a cross, suffering the burden and pain for our sake, for our righteousness. Father God, we come before you joyfully, thankfully. We come recognizing that all good gifts ultimately come from you. Lord, at this time of year, it's, it's sad to see so many in the world who get so excited about Christmas, but entirely miss out uh, the greatest gift of all, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, who, as we thought last week, brought all sorts of things with him. Father God, I just pray that as a church and as a people, we will be able to witness to those around us. When people ask us why we're bothering to go to church on Christmas Day, why we wouldn't rather stay at home and uh, celebrate, maybe be able to tell them that we come here to celebrate together the real reason, the one thing to celebrate. Father God, Christmas, uh, it can be a difficult time for some. We know it can be a time that brings back bad memories a time that's upsetting uh, lord we know that there are people who here today are mourning uh, lord <clears throat> and we pray uh, for the the barker family uh, and upon the loss of uh, tim's dad this week lord we pray that you'll comfort them and uh, give them peace we pray for uh, the tathams as well as we uh, continue to 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 mourn for calf um, lord we rejoice knowing that both of those are in heaven with you Father God, how good it is to have the hope that we do. How good it is to have the hope of heaven. And Lord, I pray that we may all be able to look forward to that glorious day when we join you in that eternal kingdom. But Lord, you've put us here on this earth for a reason. You've given us a service to perform. You've gifted us all in different ways. Help us, I pray, to know how we can serve you. Help us to know what we can do as our part in your kingdom. Lord, I thank you for the young people that are here today. I thank you that they uh, come and hear your word week in, week out. And I pray that you'll be very real to them. I pray for each of us that if we don't yet trust in the Lord Jesus as our saviour, that today may be the day when we realise our need of him. Lord, it's good to be able to remind each other of the very basic hopes of our faith, that through Christ, through faith in Christ, we have hope of eternal life, a sure and certain hope, an inheritance kept in heaven for us. May that hope bring us great joy and great peace. May that hope be the thing that we delight in most. Lord, I thank you for this church. I thank you for all the people in it. I thank you that you've brought us together to serve you together. What a blessing that is. I thank you for your word too. I thank you that we've just for what we've just read, uh, that Jan just read to us. I thank you for the, the words of Zechariah, and I pray that they will be beneficial to us this morning as we think about them uh, further. Lord, be with us all, I pray. Quieten our hearts and minds to take in your word. In Christ's name I ask him. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing once more before we look into God's word. We are going to sing, uh, See Him Lying on a Bed of Straw. You can't call it a Christmas carol, but there's a line that says, mine forgiveness by your death for me. And what a line that is. By Christ's death, we can receive forgiveness. Maybe we had to think about that very carefully. See him lying on a bed of straw. <laughs>
Last week when we gathered together, we were thinking about the song of praise that, that Mary sang upon her recognition uh, that she was blessed and would be uh, bringing forward a, a great uh, baby, a saviour. Uh, Elizabeth had said to her that blessed are you among women. And she sang this, this song of praise that we call the, the Magnificat. And we thought about several themes uh, in it. Today, we see a, the next kind of body of spoken word in Luke's gospel. Another crying out in praise. Before we look into it, I have a question that may seem a bit weird and disconnected and hopefully we'll be able to join back together. I wonder this morning what it is that you are most afraid of. What causes you most fear or brings you the most anxiety. And I'm not going to say anything more about that now. So hold that thought in your head. And hopefully we'll come back to it. Here with Zechariah's prophecy. As Zechariah is beginning to speak. We realize that just before he speaks. His baby has been born. And then eight days later, uh, was at the temple, uh, was being circumcised, wasn't at the temple, sorry. He has this young boy, this young baby, and also he hasn't been able to speak. Zechariah, when he was told that he would have a baby, didn't believe it. And as part of that, he was unable to speak, possibly for around about a year. But when he writes on a tablet that the baby's name is John, we read in Luke chapter uh, 1 and verse 64, immediately his mouth was opened, his tongue loosed, and he spoke, blessing God. Possibly what we're about to look into is what he spoke, is what that's alluding to. But I wonder if we hadn't been able to speak for up to a year, what would be the first thing? that comes out of our mouth what would be the first thing that we say and it probably would identify the state of our heart the first thing that we cry out would probably show what's most important to us in the world now imagine you just had a baby and i I remember having uh, babies, I've had two, and it was very exciting. And the first thing you do now is take a picture and send it to various WhatsApp groups to, to show parents or whoever it is 
uh, what, what what you've just had that doesn't sound the right phrase for a baby but uh, you know what i mean zechariah opened his mouth upon this miraculous baby's birth no one ever thought elizabeth would be able to have child have a child and the first thing he does is praise god blesses god give thanks to god and we know that he was empowered as well. Verse 67 says, Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, much like Mary uh, was speaking uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit, so was Zechariah. These words come from God. And I hope Zechariah's words inspire us to praise God today. Today, we celebrate Christmas Day, a clear reminder that we're celebrating for what God has done for his people. John amazes me in that glorious way, as I've already said, that he doesn't start to wax lyrical about his new baby. He doesn't start to be obsessed with the, the fingernails or whatever it is that you notice on a baby because they're all small and cute. He starts to praise God for a baby that hasn't even been born yet. Verse 68 and 78. Both bring um, blessings to God, talking about uh, the mercy and the redemption of God. And they kind of tie the whole thing together. Implying that this whole thing is about one topic. The salvation that John will later talk about, the salvation that will come through Christ. But as we go through it, we see pictures of Old Testament history repeating itself. And we see two parts. Firstly, praise for God. And secondly, very briefly, plans for John. So as we begin, let's think about how Zechariah praises God. Verse 68, we read, blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he has visited and redeemed his people. To be redeemed means to be bought back. We think uh, in the Old Testament of Boaz redeeming Naomi's land or uh, Naomi's husband's land, at least buying it back into the family. It had obviously been sold to pay for the trip um, to Moab. We see the Israelites being redeemed out of Egypt. The cost of which can include both the lives of some Egyptians, the Egyptian firstborns, includes the lives of those lambs that were slain for the first Passover. The Israelites were redeemed at quite a cost. They were brought back into to God's uh, into closeness with God. But it's not just redemption that Zechariah is talking about. He talks about how God is visiting his people, as we know in the, the, the person of Christ. And that's happened in the past as well. I'm not going to turn to it, but if you did turn to Exodus chapter 4, uh, we read in verse 29, Moses and Aaron gathered together all the elders of the people Aaron spoke all the words that the Lord has spoken to Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people. And the people believed when they heard that the Lord had visited the people of Israel. The Lord had visited the people of Israel long ago. And it caused the people to believe what Moses and Aaron were saying. Zechariah recognized that once again, God was visiting his people, drawing near to them, as he redeems them, he's drawing near, as he pays a price ultimately, buys them back, redeems them back into closeness with him. God was drawing near through the person of Christ to walk and talk upon this earth. How good that is, how blessed we are. And God is not now some distant being. He is with us. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit has been sent to work in us, to empower us, to, to sustain us, to strengthen us, to bring us to Christ. And through him, we may know a closeness 
to God. Zechariah praises God for drawing near. God is still near. We don't need to fear a distant and malevolent God. We have a loving Father. We have the Son who works as a priest in between us and the Father, and the Holy Spirit who empowers us and draws us near to God. Zechariah continues praising God and talks about salvation. In verse 69, we read, He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of the holy prophets from of old. I don't know if Zechariah fully realized the salvation that was coming, whether he, like many, thought it was uh, the earthly kingdom of Israel that was to be saved. But he still recognized that there was a savior, a descendant of David, a long prophesied king, one who has been promised for many years, is now at hand. And that to him, by the order in which he's speaking, seems more exciting than even the birth of his firstborn. A savior is to come. And that is good news for us all. By nature, we are far from God. By nature, we deserve judgment. But through Christ, we can be saved. Why does Zechariah talk about David and the prophets? Well, because that shows Jesus is who he was supposed to be. The answer to God's promise. God has kept his promises. Christ came to fulfill them. We can trust in anything that God has said, any promise that has been made. He proved his faithfulness time and time again, but none, no time less than upon the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. I love it if you read through um, the Gospel of Matthew particularly and try and highlight every prophecy that's answered in the first few chapters. If you go back to the Old Testament to try and highlight them, you're constantly flicking back and forward. God keeps his promises. He keeps his word. Zechariah also uh, mentions that this baby that's to come, as we know the Lord Jesus, will be a deliverer from enemies. He says in verse 71, that we should be saved from our enemies, from the hand of all who hate us. The Israelites had many enemies throughout history. Different tribes, different nations that had uh, come against them in battle, the Philistines being uh, the, the famous ones, the, the Syrians, the Babylonians. And God saved his people time and time again, no matter how much they rejected him, he brought them back into the fold. He brought them back to the land of Israel. Politically, in Zechariah's day, the Israelites had enemies on every side. Enemies within, the Romans uh, particularly. And you could argue that maybe Zechariah is saying that they'll be saved from the Romans. And yes, it's true. The nation of Israel lasted longer than the empire in Rome. But there's much more to it than that. There's much more to it because God didn't just save his people from one enemy, from one nation. He didn't just deliver them back to an earthly land. God, through the Lord Jesus Christ, saved his people which is now the church from all the enemies that are at hand and he saved them ultimately from the ultimate enemy the devil himself the devil who so long ago had been disrupting god's perfect world was through this baby that's to come entirely crushed and that is reason for us today to be full of praise. Nothing that's thrown against us can ever truly stand. We read in Matthew's gospel, Matthew 16 and verse 18, you are Peter, on this rock I will build my church. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. Through Christ, we are saved from judgment. Through Christ, we are saved from our enemies. Yes, we may still face 
pain, we may still face persecution. And we read in the, the Beatitudes, blessed are those who are persecuted. But ultimately, no one and no thing on this earth can do anything to us if our faith is in Christ. Because our hope is not in the things of this earth, but in the glorious things of heaven. And that can never be taken from us. Because this baby that was to come, the baby that hadn't even been born when Zechariah was saying this, delivers his people from their enemies. We see salvation, we see deliverance, and we also see mercy. Uh, verse 72 says, uh, from the hand of all who hate us, to show the mercy promised to our fathers, to remember his holy covenant. Often we can think of salvation in a human, a human way. People might save people in a, a certain way. A, a doctor might save a life. Uh, the doctor has done a wonderful thing. Uh, that is the, the doctor's the profession. A person that we might call a, a hero might, may save someone uh, from a burning building. But they would save them because they see it as, as worth it, worthwhile. They would, they would possibly uh, see that person as having a, a better hope than they have. We understand the idea of salvation very often that salvation will come at a cost. A cost to the one who is saved. Not always, and I'm sure you can pick holes in my argument there, but with the salvation that's brought by Christ, it is brought about an entire mercy. It's brought through the purest love. It's a great gift. It's a merciful gift, one that, one that needs no, no payment, no price made. We are saved, not because of who we are or what we are, but because God has chosen us to be his children through no work of our own. This mercy that was shown by God had been promised for years and years. And that mercy is at hand now. If you're not trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour, if I've been talking about the hope of heaven and you think, what on earth is he talking about? I tell you, there is mercy to be found by asking God, speaking to him for forgiveness, to be shown the way to eternal life. There's mercy to be found by putting your faith in him. Entirely free. Do we deserve redemption? Do we deserve for God to, to, to pay a price to bring, us, to bring us back to him? Not at all. Is it a reward for our service, our kindness, our niceness? Not at all. It is an entire act of loving mercy. There's a story uh, that has a few different iterations um, about a man who is a portrait artist on the side of a road and um, he uh, paints a, um, a picture of someone and they turn it around and the person who's had their picture taken is aghast and says to the artist that's horrible you have not done me any justice here uh, to which the uh, portrait uh, artist the one who did the painting says oh, that's the trouble you don't require justice uh, you require mercy if I'm going to paint a nice picture Blessedly, we don't have to face the justice that we deserve. We simply have to fall upon God's mercy. What a reason to praise today, as Zechariah did, as we can continue to do. We're nearly there. 
verse 73 continues, the mercy that he swore to Abraham, the mercy that God's people would be a blessing to all nations. That blessing brought through Christ. Galatians 3 and verse 13 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the Lord by becoming a curse for us. Verse 14, so that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles. Many of the blessings uh, that the Israelites had uh, enjoyed, if we think of manna in the wilderness, had been specifically for them. But this mercy, this salvation, this great blessing wasn't just to be uh, held to one uh, physical nation, but was to be brought to people from across the world. And we can rejoice today knowing that we can be a part of that blessing. And now what? Well, verse 74 gives us a now what? So that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, which we've already thought about, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. I asked at the start what it is that you're most afraid of. Maybe the thing that brings you the most fear is judgment. Maybe God's judgment. Maybe other people's judgment. Maybe inwardly you recognize that you are, are not uh, as good as you would hope to be. And therefore you may face some kind of judgment. Through Christ, we need not fear because he has taken all of that judgment. It may be that you fear things of earth, that they may work against us, that they may cause us harm. We read in Romans 8 verse 31, if God is for us, who can be against us? We've seen this morning that God has kept his promises. We've seen this morning that God brings salvation and God is full of mercy. We also know that God is full of power. He is mighty. Whatever it is that we may be afraid of, we can turn to him because he is stronger. He is greater. He is more loving, more merciful than anything this earth uh, may provide. We need not fear of anything being taken away because we have full security through Christ, this baby that Zechariah is so excited about. Finally, we very briefly see a few plans that Zechariah talks about for John. Verse 60, uh, 76, you child will be called the prophet of the most high, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people for the forgiveness of their sins. John had a special privilege, and yet it's all about Christ. Zechariah briefly talks about the baby that I imagine is in his arms. And he says, you, you child, you will be a prophet of the most high. You will go before the Lord to prepare his ways. Even that is all about Christ. John had a truly wonderful mission to go into the world and tell people about the salvation that was to come. Um, we know he did that. We know as we read through the, the early parts of Matthew, John was there telling people to repent, baptizing them. But he had another job to prepare them for the one that was to come. That as we read about in verse 78, was about to burst onto the scene like the sun coming up in a sunrise. Verse 78, the tender mercy of our God whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. We thought a bit about light last week. John was going to tell of someone who would burst onto the scene like the first rays of sun in the morning sky, changing the landscape, showing people the way to go in a world full of darkness. There's a game that some of the young people here um, play on their tablets or whatever, that because I'm trying to stay young as desperately as I can, I sometimes still play. And it's a game called Minecraft. And if you'd never played it, I, I wouldn't suggest it. It's, it's fun. But at night, the sun goes down in this game and then all these weird, creepy things come out to um, try and hurt you. Um, but if you wait long enough, 
during, uh, in the morning, the sun comes up and they all turn to flame. They all burst away. And it's not very many ways you can make Minecraft uh, have any sort of biblical illusion. But Jesus came onto the scene and actually, in a way, like the sun coming up in that game, taking all the dark things away, it's a bit of a picture for what Jesus did. He burst onto the scene to a dark place, a world that's lost without him. And he showed them the way to salvation, the way to eternal life, the way to live. And through him, all the things of the dark are entirely irrelevant because he has conquered sin. He has conquered the devil. He has conquered darkness. Zechariah is praising God because of the sunrise that's about to come, the changing landscape that's to be brought through Christ. I hope today that we can be full of praise for God because of the Lord Jesus Christ and the many, many things he did. Without this light, we are lost. We are in peril. We face real danger. But when we're trusting in him, the way is clear to us. The enemies are defeated. The world is entirely different. And the hope we have is entirely secure. We need have no fear, for we walk in the light. I've spoken long enough. Amen. We are going to close in song. There will be a cup of tea served after the service uh, in the back hall as normal. If you can't stay because your turkey's in the oven or you're driving to Leicester to see family or whatever it is, please don't feel there's any expectation for you to stay to join us uh, with coffee. Our, our lunch isn't ready till half one and it was our children have been up for hours already so a cup of tea sounds quite appealing but there's no expectation to stay we are going to finish uh, by singing infant holy uh, in ephesians chapter 5 and verse 19 we are encouraged to sing encouragements to each other encourage each other with song as we sing this we sing together and remind each other that christ the babe, the Christ who came, is Lord of all, and also that Christ the babe, Christ who came, was born for you, so that you may have the hope of salvation if you're putting your faith in him. Let's sing together, sing to each other, encourage each other as we sing, infant holy, infant lowly. <laughs> Lord God, I thank you that today we can rejoice free from sorrow, free from fear, trusting in the Saviour that was born 2,000 years ago that came to this earth as a man to die on a cross, to redeem us, to bring us close to you, 
with full assurance and full security. Father God, help us to leave this place rejoicing and praising your name. In Christ's name I ask it. Amen. Uh, maybe I could just make an announcement. Um, Tom, Eddie, we brought you Ellie, some... Samuel. <laughs> That's gone. Oh. We brought you so, uh, the, the fellowship brought you some presents just to say thank you so much for your ministry to us this year. Thank you um, very much. It's very and kind. And I should say that they, they are for sharing with, with, with Isaac and Samuel. That's brought some, some flowers for Eddie, but also for Isaac and Samuel. Thank you so much for your ministry. We know how much you work for us. How much you serve us in the Lord, your your preaching and teaching, but also behind the scenes, how much you work there so much behind there behind the scenes. Uh, you should have received the money in your account, my treasurer, but it's a little bit suspicious that he's gone off to the bar, <laughs> Barbados. This morning. I'm sure there's no link between the two, but anyway. So thank you so much. Thank you very much for all you do for us. Thank you for this kind gift. We're very grateful. Um, these do say Isaac and Samuel on them, so I can't, if they're chocolate, I can't eat them all. I'm, uh, it's a shame. But thank you all very much. And thank you for the kind gift. I was astounded uh, when we alert popped up on our bank account. So it's very kind. Thank you very much. Um, happy Christmas. Thank you.